Now, I spoke to you, Vic, after you came back from the uh, pre-season tour yeah. when you went to America. Um, how long ago does that feel now? I know, years ago. It does yeah. Yeah. But was that, does that still remain sort of one of the highlights of the season? Because that was quite a new experience, wasn't it, for a lot of girls? Yeah, it was good. It, at the end of the day, it was a commercial tour. So yeah. with, with the title, there's there's a lot of commercial things that we had to do. But I think just to take some of the girls to, to the USA that haven't been there before, that's a big plus. To travel on a private jet with the men's team. We have players in our team that are lifelong Liverpool fans. So as fans, as well as players, it was a it was a, a dream come true for some of them. And, and Neve Charles will tell you about that dream come true for her. And obviously Neve Fai is a, a diehard Liverpool fan as well. And Bo Kearns and... For them, it was it was incredible, and for the rest of the girls, um, you know, it was it was a great great place to go. Great facilities that we trained at the, some of the best universities in the states, and then obviously we got to watch the the men train as well, be integrated with them on on some um, commercial events, and then watch them play their games. So it was good. It was good for the group to come together as well socially, because when you're away from your your home environment, your English environments, it's always good to bring bring the team together so no it was good I enjoyed it yeah and and what's it like for you like having to sort of go away and be away from from your family yeah um that was oh it was it it was an amazing experience for uh for the whole team for the staff like uh yeah really valuable tour I think um for like for me on a personal level I I missed Jack's first birthday while we were there um so yeah it was that that side of it's always always going to be tough but um but yeah it was it was really important like Vic said to the bonding of the girls and um and and also for (laughs) for uh yeah our staff as well um we're, we're still a very new team um all coming together and and so are the players so I think um just helping form some of those relationships is really important yeah, definitely. It came out of the tour. Yeah, another highlight this season, well, certainly for me, um, was going to Anfield to watch the derby game, um, the first WSL derby between Liverpool and Everton. Um, obviously, the scoreline was disappointing from from our point of view, but the actual day and the actual occasion was just so good, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was fantastic that the players got to play in front of 23,000. Again, the crowds, it's incredible what we've seen so far this season in the women's game um having these big attendance at premier league stadiums so but to have it our stadium is is for me is a special moment and for the girls as well to walk out to our fans singing you never walk alone and i know it was at the time it was quite raw and it we were a bit emotional because it did hurt losing and you should no one's ever going to be happy about losing a game of football especially in the way that we did when we played so well but um i think the whole occasion you know was fantastic and Credit to both teams, Everton, Liverpool, all players put on such a good showcase to hook so many people that were there that probably never seen women's football before. So I think that was the big win mm-hmm. from it. Um, and then obviously at the end of the game, the final whistle gone, the cop, we're still clapping and applauding our, our players. So for that, we will forever be grateful to our fans that stuck by us when um, it was a tough time when the final whistle went and the result hadn't gone our way. Yeah, and, and from, a, from like a, a coaching point of view, what? how do you deal with sort of disappointing results like that and how do you what do you do in the training ground like the following week to get the players back up again I look at that that game such a mixture of emotions because um what an incredible event um you know I I have walked out in front of 30,000 when we played China in the opening game 2007 the World Cup but the feeling at Anfield is just like another level um and you know, the result didn't go our way, but we felt, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything to, to people outside of our tent, but we felt that the performance was, was there, that we deserved something out of it. So so that's that's even harder, obviously, as a coaching staff and as players to take. Um, so naturally, everyone was, like, sort of given a day to... To absorb it and uh, and recover from it, um, but then you just you, you just have to keep cracking on. Like it's um, you know we we hopefully will have many more games um, at Anfield. We hopefully will have many more games at other teams' menus as well. Um, and it for us, it, it just had to also be part of the process. 
um, like I said earlier, we've got we've got a young team, we've got a very new team kind of coming together and building, and and uh, yeah, it, it, for us we had to pick on the positives of that performance, which we felt there were quite a lot of, and um, and try to build into our next phase. Yeah, you said there about um, like strong performances, and you've had some like really narrow defeats this season against like some of the the best teams in the league. You know, like Arsenal, Man City, both of them were one nil. Obviously, you got the draw with Chelsea as well, um, and then you had that other game with Arsenal where Fernie scored that really good goal, and yeah. and uh, yeah, was that the same game she assisted Rins as well? Yeah, um, yeah. So that was obviously a narrow defeat. So you've come close against these big teams. And obviously, you know, it's no secret that um, bottom of the table at the moment, but do those performances give you the confidence that if we can play these last eight games, then, you know, that there's enough there for us to to get out of the position that we're in? Absolutely. I think we've, we've seen a change. It's not just on Fernie, but we have seen a change with her joining the squad. Um, the, the stats don't lie. Four goals in four games. That's what she's contributed. But it's not just that. And I said this loads of times anyway, and a leadership um, that she brings to the group. She's very positive in the way that she she pushes people on. Um, and we do have a strong leadership group in Bradders, Neve and Fernie. So she's joined, come in and joined the leadership group straight away. And I felt felt we were in a real good place to, obviously, you're only as good as your last game. And our last game was was one of those games that, you know, can't really put a finger on it. We, we had such a short amount of... Um, we had so many games in sh- such a short amount of times. And two of those uh, opponents were Chelsea and the in the cup then we had Arsenal then obviously we went and played West Ham so I think we were physically a little bit drained I don't think that's fair unfair to say not that there's any excuses because of things that we could have done better 100% um but that's long gone in the past it's like two months ago now which is tough um since then we kicked on another level in training because we always do we've we've never you know dragged our feet for too long it's right put it to bed not good enough this is what we need to do better demand it from each other raise our standards raised our standards and then unfortunately we're in this pandemic which has been um a bit of a shame but for for us to to take our foot off the gas but at the end of the day the big thing is that there's so many people at the moment going through so much that it's it's important that we stay at home make sure we keep on top of our uh, programs, stay connected as a group. And and if we do return, be ready. And I think that we will be ready um, if we are to return to the league. We've, as a staffing group, we've done eight profiles on the eight oppositions we're, we're due to play if we do play. And the girls have been working tirelessly hard um, throughout these eight weeks to keep on top of their physical um, programs, which have, which have changed as the government's guidelines and, and the FA's um, direction has changed, we've had to change with it and be adaptable. So it's been challenging, but we've 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 faced the challenge um, head on together as a group. Um, but you know we, we are desperate to be back playing, um, but we know that we only want to come back when it's safe. Yeah, absolutely. And you you mentioned there about keeping the players fit, but what about keeping them safe as well? I know that you've had. Um, You've had, what is it, somebody going around and sort of disinfecting the, the houses? The staff yeah, have had that as well, haven't they? Yeah, they've even sprayed my dog. They sprayed your dog as well, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, I, all the, all Melwood staff, players got their houses done and, and we've done the same. So it's across both departments. It's important that they, they came the first the first week. Um, so they've had to travel all the way up to Newcastle to see Fernie, Leicester. <laughs> Courtney, Nottingham to see so you know down to London see Rins, Basingstoke see Beck so they've gone all the way over the country just to make sure all players and staff have, have had their houses sprayed it does last up to four weeks so then when four weeks was up they came out and did their visit again um, and uh, they've been to our training ground and sprayed all the training ground as well so that if when we do return if we do return it's going to be safe for the players and I think the, that's the, the most important thing in all of this, although it's tough and we want to be back on the grass, is that we have to make sure that, and the girls have to make sure that they're staying at home and staying safe um, and sticking to the government guidelines because um, there's a, there's enough tragic going tragic stories going on and we would hate to be a part of that and anybody fall ill through this virus and it affects anybody's health. So we've got to do everything we can 